What's going on guys? So after months and months and months of non-stop drought, we've now had several weeks of non-stop rain. So just about every day we've had rain, which I am thankful for. I'm actually not complaining at all, other than the fact that we got mosquitoes everywhere. The grass is literally growing inches per day. I'm not even kidding you, it is insane. We just cut this grass. Let me show you this real quick. We just cut this grass uh, I'm gonna say four days ago down to three and a half inches and that's how tall it is and that's how tall all of it is so I'm not even like kidding it's just it's incredibly tall already so it's growing inches every single day and we can't get back out here and mow it because we have standing water out here everywhere I'm talking about everywhere the pond is over full I mean it's just it's just really, really bad right now. So yeah, we definitely have water, a lot of it. Super, super marshy out here. And again, the mosquitoes have been absolutely insane. If you wanna get kind of an idea how deep it is, it's really deep. And we just had a kind of a, another torrential downpour uh, yesterday and another one this morning. So that said, you know, a lot of folks often wonder what this, is for and most people can flip it up and see that there is a uh, gfi 110 outlet out here which is super cool i installed this little 12 volt outlet out here which is where the sprayer used to be so this used to be here and to make room on the inside i moved this over here because it's a hose and then i installed a 12 volt outlet right here to be able to reuse that hole that was already cut out but a lot of people often wonder what all you can use here All right, so there's a cable connection, but it's on the inside right here. And if you wanna put a TV out here on a stand, if I wanted to maybe put a mount here on the wall or the sidewall, I could do that. Um, but there are different uses that of course you can use for this. I could put a radio here, I could put a small fan, all sorts of different things can plug in here. But I think one that a lot of people probably don't think about is a bug zapper. So, there are several different flavors of bug zappers. This is just one that I already had. And you know, something that happens whenever you have an RV anywhere, whether it's at an RV park, whether it's at your own property in storage, bugs tend to accumulate on your RV. So this is actually a really good solution and not really an overall solution, but a partial solution to just trying to keep bugs maybe off of your RV and off of you, especially if you're camping. So I have this little stand right here. It's designed for a small hanging plant or something like that. And I'm just gonna plug it in to the side wall of my RV right here. The light is on and now I have kind of a temporary bug repellent, bug zapping solution that hopefully will keep them off of the RV and off of me as I go in and out of the RV and uh, attract them here. So. I just don't have to worry about them as much. So yeah, that's essentially what we're gonna do. We'll just keep it plugged in here. This is a GFI outlet. The reset for this is inside of the bathroom. I actually uh, did a video where I showed you guys where the reset is in the event that you know you trip this thing and you need to get it reset so it'll work. Um, if this for some reason does go off and we lose power at this specific outlet, I don't really mind that much. I will get a notification because I have a camera plugged into the outlet inside here and if that camera goes offline, it sends me a notification through my Simply Safe. But yeah, this should be marginally helpful. I'm not gonna say it's gonna fix all the problems, but it should help out a little bit. Um, I might put a little bit more sturdy stand here though, because this one only goes in the ground about four inches and with as wet as it is out here, it's likely to fall out. But really, really good solution for just trying to keep some of the bugs off of you. And uh, it might actually help, you know, who knows? We'll see, I can definitely tell that bugs are attracted to it because there are still several of them that are fried to it on the inside. So I got a bit of a dilemma and I'm looking for some advice. I've gotten the family together and we've kind of discussed this, but we are in the back side of the, uh, the log cabin and we have this huge live oak tree, which is covered in ball moss. You can actually see it all over the limbs up here. And uh, about a week ago, the piece or the limb that was attached right there fell. 
and it was probably six feet long and it probably weighed 40 pounds. It was that heavy. And it thankfully broke down and fell straight down right here without breaking anything or damaging anything. But I have, and you probably can't tell, but there's probably about 12 to 14 feet that overhangs the top of this roof. Now, what concerns me about this roof is that it is an actual real tile roof. So these things are kind of fragile and I don't particularly want to get up there and start cutting. And if you want to know the distance from about there to the top of the roof, it's about eight and a half feet. So if I start trimming, which I could probably do, it'd likely start falling on the cabin, but it would require me to get up there. Now, some folks are going to say, why don't you rent like a genie or something, a bucket so you can get over here. The problem is there's nowhere to park it so we can actually raise it up and get it over here because we have this tree here, which I got to remove part of that limb. Um, and you're surrounded by trees over here. So there's no feasible way to get to that. And that's an idea that we thought about. However, the, uh, the other idea is that we tie a rope off here, pull it that way, um, and then we cut it and then just swing this back, but then it's gonna swing into this tree and there's just not enough space here to, to properly manage where that's gonna go if we cut it off. Um, I had an idea and that's to pull the excavator up here, put the bucket fully open or curled out right here with the thumb kind of bracing the bottom and then we'll chain it to that. We cut it, lift it up, move it back and trim it down. Uh, I don't know if that's the best route to go, but what would you guys do? What's the best way for those of you who, uh, who have done something like this to take a really, really massive set of limbs that are directly on top of the, the roof here down without possibly damaging the roof. I've, I've considered a lot of different things. One thing I definitely have to consider is if any of these limbs are weakened like that one, because if they are, then tying a rope off to it so I can pull it this way could actually result in the thing just snapping off the minute we put any tension on it. Um, same with over here. And to do the bucket idea with the excavator, my challenge is, is if we do remove this limb, which is arguably the easier limb to remove, it's gonna offset the weight, which means my bucket idea will no longer be effective because the minute we, we chain it right here and cut it, it's gonna wanna spin and possibly damage the roof. But yeah, this is a dilemma that I've been, I've been working on for a while now because I don't wanna wait till we get a big windstorm to come in here to see if this tree limb falls on the uh, roof and does damage, especially considering there's a big skylight right over here. Anyways, I would love for you guys to put some ideas in the, uh, in the comment section because I am definitely looking for some. Again, right now, the one idea that I think has more, more credibility than anything is to just bring the excavator up, attach the bucket right here, cut it, and then lift up and back this whole assembly off about 10 feet so I can lower it down and we can start chopping at it at a much lower level in a much safer way. But again, I have no idea how much this weighs. So this section right here all the way up with these limbs, I mean, that's probably close to 25 feet overall length. It's hard to tell in a, in a video. My gut tells me it's probably about 800 pounds, maybe, roughly, I don't know. The diameter of this trunk right here going up is about, about 12 inches, yeah, about 10 to 12 inches. But um, yeah, any tree experts watch the channel, please let me know. I'd love your advice and suggestions and uh, at least give me something else to ponder. So if you guys have been wondering what my wife's channel is all about, Miss BTBRV, you can definitely see she's been uh, having a lot of fun recording her own content. She's got a monitor here to see what she's doing. She's got a, a tablet there so she can kind of get all of her information together. All these cool utensils and things. This stuff over here is super cool. She reviewed this on her channel. Um, this thing over here is a chopper. I don't know if all the videos that she's been doing are out yet, but... Yeah, very, very cool. All this stuff is designed to be used in an RV, but that doesn't mean you can't use it in your home. Anyways, definitely go check out her channel. There's a link in the description of this video if you want to get there really nice and easy and take a moment and subscribe. Okay, so back at the house, we are going to be using my DeWalt pole saw to cut down some branches that we're able to get through. Um, you may be asking why I'm not using the Toro because the Toro we have now doesn't have an extension in the center and it's not tall enough to reach some of these branches. So anyways, we're gonna cut down some branches so they, uh, they don't fall on us if they break off.
pieces of wood are actually pretty heavy. They may not look it, but they are. Okay, now I think we probably want to remove this one right here too. Okay, so this is definitely going to be a bit of a heavier limb. We don't want this to fall in the house because it's right here. Yeah, that one was pretty heavy. Oh my gosh, this thing... I'm gonna say that probably weighs about 30 pounds. Oh yeah. Easily, right? Easy 30, 40. So when this one broke off right here, and it was about six feet long, for it to break off where it did and then fall straight down saved us from a lot of damage potentially happening on top of the roof here. Uh, th these are all oak trees, so the wood is very dense and very hard wood, and it can absolutely do a lot of damage if it falls. So that's one of the reasons why we're so concerned about this setup right here and trying to bring down as many branches as possible that are over the house. So yeah, we're going to be out here working on this for a little longer. we got some more limbs we're going to take down, but I definitely want y'all's advice. What do you guys think we should do about this section over here? I could rope that one and pull it off. That one's not my big concern. It's this one right here. And to give you kind of an idea, this is about eight feet. No, it's probably about 10 feet as far as the overall height. Um, you'd have to get on the roof, which I really don't want to do, mainly because I don't want to break any of these, these tile roof shingles. And you could kind of start cutting it down, but even a foot long section of this stuff is super, super heavy. And I would hate for it to fall on the roof and do damage especially considering there's a skylight right there. Leave a comment below. I'd really like to know what your thoughts are and uh, maybe you need different perspective of, of what's going on here because things always look a little easier on camera until you're actually out here trying to do it. And we've had enough really smart people out here trying to figure out what we can do. I still think putting the excavator right here, kind of chaining it to it, cutting it and lifting it off would be the best bet. But as heavy as this was, just those branches falling there, I'm a little concerned about the weight and the leverage over the front of the excavator. I don't think it would lift the back up as long as I have the shovel down, but uh, definitely want to get some advice and feedback from you guys before I attempt to handle this. Anyways, guys, please leave a comment below. It's super important to me that, uh, that you guys are engaged. I appreciate it. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and I will talk to you again very soon.